In this video, we'll be demonstrating the steps involved when donning biological PPE for Ebola patient care as used by the Nebraska Biocontainment Patient Care Unit. This PPE will include a protective suit and powered air purifying respirator or PAPR. The donning process is a step-by-step -step process that ensures good infection control and safety. All steps should be done systematically and in the correct order. A donning partner should assure all equipment is properly applied. You will need the following equipment. A biological protective suit, a full papper hood, a papper motor with the appropriate tubing, testing equipment, and set of HEPA filters, a pair of plastic boot liners, a surgical cap, a pair of surgical boot covers, standard patient care gloves, standard patient care masks, long cuff KC500 purple nitrile gloves, a roll of duct tape, at least eight fluid ounces of a non-caffeinated beverage, hand sanitizing gel, and finally, access to a chair. This will make the donning process safer and easier. A donning partner should assure that all donning steps are completed properly by assisting with securing ties, taping, or strap placement if necessary. Before beginning the process of donning your PPE, the donor and donning partner should drink about eight fluid ounces of a non-caffeinated beverage. You are likely to be wearing the PPE for several hours. The PPE is hot and may cause dehydration. The donor and donning partner should hydrate outside the patient care area as no food or drink should be consumed within the patient care area. The donning process starts by removing all jewelry you are wearing. This includes rings, necklaces, and earrings. Next, the donor and donning partner should perform hand hygiene. After hand hygiene, the donor and donning partner should change into scrubs and washable footwear. If either the donor or donning partner have long hair, it should be covered with a surgical cap. The donning partner should now put on a standard patient care gown. Ties should be fastened in a bow at both the top and at the waist. Next, the donner and donning partner put on foot covers. The donning partner and donner should now each take and record their temperatures. Once each other's temperature has been recorded, the donor and donning partner should put on a standard patient care mask, perform hand hygiene, and then a pair of standard patient care gloves. Unwrap the HEPA filters if they are still in their packaging. It's very important to remember to remove or unscrew the side caps. Failure to remove the side caps will prevent airflow through the PAPR motor. Attach one filter to each side of the PAPR motor unit. You must also make sure that the plug is securely screwed into the bottom port of the PAPR unit. You should now test the PAPR using the flow tester. The flow tester fits into the air outflow. If the battery has sufficient charge and the filters are uncapped, the tester will rise above the minimum air flow line. When the PAPR is turned on, if you hear a continuous beeping noise, you should exchange the battery as this indicates that it's low on power. If the belt is not attached to the PAPR motor, that should be attached now. Next, the donor removes the foot covers and gloves, placing them in the trash. Perform hand hygiene, 
and finally remove the standard patient care mask, also placing it in the trash. The first piece of PPE you should don are the plastic boot liners. You should then select a suit that is loose fitting, as this will aid in movement while wearing the suit and will make removing the suit easier. The donor should inspect the selected suit for any tears or manufacturing imperfections. Next, the donor should sit on the chair to apply the biological protective suit up to your waist. With the assistance of your donning partner, you should put on a pair of boot covers. Stand up from the chair and put on the upper portion of the biological protective suit. Pull up the zipper of the suit so that it is just above your waist. The donor and donning partner should now put on the PAPR battery pack with the tubing attached. The PAPR unit should be securely located at the small of your back. Make sure that it's comfortable before proceeding. You should next perform hand hygiene. The first layer of gloves are standard patient care gloves. It's very important that the gloves are worn under the sleeves of the biological protective suit. The next pair of gloves are the long cuff purple nitrile gloves. These should be worn over the sleeves of the biological protective suit. The donning partner should seal the cuffs of the purple gloves to the suit with duct tape. Make sure that the tape is tabbed at the end for easy removal. Now the donning partner can attach the PAPR tubing to the hood and turn the PAPR motor on. The hood is now ready to wear. It should be placed on the head and adjusted to ensure a comfortable fit. The donor should now pull the outer layer of the hood over your head and have the donning partner tuck the inner layer of the hood into the suit. When the inner layer is comfortably tucked inside the suit, the zipper can be pulled up to neck level. Your donning partner can then remove the paper liner from the sticky side of the zipper flap and seal the zipper closure.
For additional protection, the zipper closure can be sealed with duct tape. The donning partner can now pull the outer layer of the hood down over the donner's shoulders. Finally, perform a safety check with the donning partner. When caring for the patient, a third pair of patient care gloves should be worn. You should remove the third pair of gloves, disinfect the purple gloves using either bleach wipes or alcohol hand sanitizer, and replace with new patient care gloves after patient care or when contamination occurs. Aprons will also be available in the room for high splash activities. When wearing an apron, the third pair of patient care gloves should be worn over the apron sleeves.